Alright, welcome back. Today's video is going to be about the Masonic allegory about Hiram Abiff, in particular the three ruffians uh, who uh, ultimately uh, uh, attacked him and, and, and had buried him in a shallow grave. Um, if this is your first video of mine that you're seeing, I, uh, I hope that you will watch all the other videos or more of the other videos instead of just... Uh, uh, watching this one because if you if this is your first one you're not really going to understand the theme of my page which is that all stories whether movies mythologies bible stories are basically about your body uh, and or the heavenly body so everything that's in the heavenly body is inside your physical body everything that's in your physical body is basically all in your mind all is mind everything is mental everything that's inside your mind and everyone else's mind collectively is in the mind of the source or what started us all or if you want to refer to it as God um, so this is no different this story and I'll, uh, I'll summarize the story of Hiram Abiff um, you, you have to google it on your own you can find it on somewhere uh, the story in, the, in its entirety um, but it's going to show that this is basically how you incarnate a story of incarnation into this body um, the three main characters of this story is Hiram Abiff, he basically was the architect, Solomon, and Hiram King of Tyre. Tyre. So it's two Hirams, so just not to get them confused. Alright, um, what you gotta understand about my videos is that I give you facts that you can look up on your own, and what I do is try to give you based on like all my videos that show you that this is pretty much my my uh, my thesis is basically everything is about your body so what you have to do is differentiate what I, what I consider the facts so what I do on the board is write out the facts so these are the facts of the stories and I give you references and then I summarize it based on what I think it means now you may come up with a different meaning or a similar meaning or some of the things might be different because what I find is a lot of people was clicking not like or different things, but they're not giving reasons, so I'm not, I'm not sure what that is. I no longer look at the comments, um, so I apologize for that. I know people I try to end message me. Uh, I started off early on doing that, but I no longer talk back to people or correspond, so I apologize for that. I just really think that if you just watch all the videos, take notes on the facts of it all, take in consideration how I summarize or how I interpret the facts, and they come up with your own, if not the same, and then, then you'll be all right. I've given you other references of books, so you can read on your own. I've given you pages. I mean, uh, other other people's channels, uh, whom you can use, who teach class. I don't teach classes. I've given you people who can teach you breathing techniques. So once again, this is going to be about uh, a meditation. So your goal is to learn how to strengthen your visualization skills, your breathing skills, your ability to go into trance quickly, and so on and so forth. So this this story is no different. Alright, so once again, let me start off with the Hiram Abyss story, just summarizing it. You can get the full story um, if you Google it. Uh, here it is. Okay, so basically I'm going to give you the key point. So Hiram Abiff arrives in Jerusalem. He's appointed by Solomon as the chief architect. Near, near completion of the uh, what, what he wants him to do is make the uh, the Solomon's Temple, which I, which if you go look at my old video about Solomon's Temple, it's pretty much your body. It's the same as the Tabernacle uh, of the Old Testament when we talk about the Tabernacle and how the Philistines take over. So you can look at that video because what you have to go back to is knowing that Sheba, which means seven, is pretty much your seven chakras, and it says Sheba went up to Solomon. Uh, with 666 talents, so you you know 666, 666 is basically carbon. Um, you know if you look up carbon 12, you'll see carbon. So I, I did all these videos before on 666. It's carbon, which is basically your melanin. Anything organic contains all carbon. So basically you're talking about your melanin. All right. So your talents is your melanin. All right. Um, three fellow craftsmen ambushed him as he was leaving the building, de demanding the secrets of a master mason, basically the name of God. All right. So he was injured by the first two ruffians, and the third one he was struck dead by. The third one. Okay. So uh, it goes on to talk about he was, he was buried under a pile of rubble, uh, buried in a shallow grave, uh, marked by uh, a sprig of asasai, uh, some type of tree. So you can look all this up. So like I said, um, you can look up the um, the whole story. But I just want to get to the part where the three ruffians did him in, and uh, they buried him in a shallow grave. So. Um, basically, the name of the three ruffians is Jubello, Jubella, and Jubellum. If you notice, all three of them are known as the three Jews, because basically all their names are similar, except for the ending of it. 
the three endings I underline that makes them different is a O, a A, and a U M. So what you want to infer? Well, so here it goes. That's the fact. It's also a fact that there's a such thing as an OM sound, O M, and sometimes spelled A U M. That's also a fact. It's a fact that there's a mandala, a man, uh, a, 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 you look at like a Sri Yantra. It's a fact that there's a such thing as a Sri Yantra that they call, and it's a mandala. Is there are basically nine interlocking, interlocking triangles with a single point in the middle of them. You can meditate on that, and also you can make the OM sound. Cause what, what supposedly happens is when you say OM, you're going to create that symbol in your subconscious anyway. Uh, you'll be able to see that if you do practice these meditations that you will create everything is about geometry So that's what the G stands for Primary not God Somewhat generation because generation means sex, but basically it's mainly geometry Because um, that's what Hiram Abiff uh, represent. He's basically the king of geometry uh, basically um What I this is my opinion and something the opinion of others That's what the, this story is really about the ohm sound see everything is created you incarnate with physical sounds um, with vibrations and tones. That's what the word atone mean. You want to atone, become at one. So that's how you break down the word atone. Everything is about sound. Like if you go to the black church, they have an organ. Every sound corresponds to an organ that corresponds to a chakra. When you go to the Buddhist temple, they make these sounds. Om, nom, nom, come, all that stuff. All that is a vibration to, to recreate these different geometries that you may not be able to see until you start getting more and more uh, open and clairvoyant with your third eye and so on and so forth. Uh, so if you go look at the word own on Wikipedia, I'll just I'll just read a little bit. It's basically a sacred sound and a spiritual icon. If you look at the icon or the symbol for own, it basically looks it has a number three in it. So that might be a little something. Like I said, you can go on and on and break this down deeper and deeper. So what I believe the three references represent is how you got incarnated with this vibrational sound. So it's not necessarily a bad thing that they killed you. So don't always look at these. Um, these allegories, as, don't judge them as good or bad or, or good or bad characters uh, because uh, it may seem that they were bad, but this is basically about you incarnating. You may have chosen to come here. Some people chose to incarnate in these physical bodies. Okay, now, what did the first uh, ruffian do? Uh, if you read the story, Jubello, let me get my notes right. Uh, I you, no, 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 let me go back. Jubella or Jubello, I may have the story a little bit wrong. But you can, um, okay, Jubella, Jubella with the A, ending with A, first hit him with, in the throat, or in the neck, I should say. Hit him in the neck with a 24-inch gauge, or what they call a rule. If you look up, look at this up in Wikipedia, what a gauge or a rule is for, it's basically um, a, a measuring device that um, sometimes, uh, I had it written down, a measuring device. A gauge in science and engineering is a device used to make measurements or in order to display certain information, like time. So notice the 24, 24 inches. That's what we're talking about. So this is symbolic of time. So what you're doing, you're gonna, these three ruffians also uh, represent three dimension or the third dimension that we're in. We're in the third dimension. So this story is about you falling into the third dimension. The first dimension is time. So basically you have 24 hours in a day. That's what that 24, that's, that's the allegory is, is symbolizing. So you get hit in the neck. So we're dealing with the throat chakra on that one. All right, the next ruffian is uh, Jubello. Hits him in the chest area with what's called a square. So in particular, in, 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 uh, in masonry, it's a framing square. So what we're dealing with now is the frame, your frame, which is what? Space. So now we have the second dimension, space and time. So we have time with the gauge, space with the square. All right, the third one, which was known as the fatal blow, was hit with a mallet or a maul so and was hitting the head so what happens is that's depth so that's the third degree space time and depth so if anybody know anything about this geometry earth is considered the cube or uh so you have uh the three dimensions of a cube all right so if you google some of the, the instruments and what they use for and you can break it down a little bit more you'll notice that the reason why a mallet and not a hammer was used anytime you use a mallet you're not trying to injure or deform the thing that you're hitting. Mallets are used when a softer blow is called for. It doesn't leave marks and it's less likely to dent the work piece. What's the work piece in this, in this particular thing? It's your body. Because remember, that's what the whole Solomon's Temple was about. You're trying to build your body so your soul can inhabit it. Remember, Hiram, if I, I broke it down before, Hiram is basically your higher self. 
Only so much of your light has fell into your body. That's what the story of the fallen angels. You are the fallen angels or fallen angles of light. Okay? You can also go into this breaking down what the square is. The square is like a, a to get you on a right angle. The word right is synonymous with what? The word correct. Right and correct. Oh, you're right. Oh, you're correct. The word correct, C-O-R-R-E-C-T, if you break it down, all it's really missing is an E in between both of the letters, the words. So the word correct, C-O-R-E, can be core, which is just your center, and erect. So you want uh, an erect core. So you you know, you hear what I'm saying, uh, bring him up perpendicular, perpendicular on his square. So remember, he got raised from the grave with a master's grip. Just like with the whole story of Jesus, who was a master, Master Mason, if you will, master builder or master architect who raised Lazarus from the grave. So what you're dealing with is a shallow grave. So what happened with, with, with uh, Hiram Abiff, he was put into a shallow grave. This is your subconscious mind. So it's not buried so deep, but it's buried just below the surface where you almost ignore it or forget you have it. So we're dealing with the subconscious here when we're talking about a shallow grave. All right. Um, okay, so I'm going to pan down. I already did that. So looking at the three characters I mentioned before, Hiram Abiff represents the throat or, or the voice. Solomon represents the heart. Hiram, king of Tyre, represents the pineal gland. Now what you're dealing with here, Solomon means peaceful. He's not the heart. Jerusalem is the heart. That's the place. So we're dealing with places. These are the places. The throat, I mean the, the neck, the chest, and the head. These are the places. The energies or the people who preside over these, these areas are, are the people. So what you're looking at, Solomon doesn't isn't the heart itself. He represents peace. So that's what a place, that's what a heart. He puts peace. He's the one who's the presiding energy, if that makes sense. All right. So Hiram, the king of Tyre, presides over the pineal gland area. He's not the pineal gland, but he's the presiding person over the pineal gland area. Now Hiram Abib is not the throat. He's definitely. I always I already told you he's in the subconscious. But basically, your subconscious is that that voice, that hidden voice that you really don't hear. That subconscious is the one that when you hear a music, a song in the in the um in the mall or wherever you are, and you can't understand why you why you why you singing it later. Oh, oh I didn't see that. Another part of it is um the things that that control your heartbeat, your breathing. You don't have to consciously think about those things. So the controller is your higher self or your high ram. A bip is the one who controls that. So you're basically dealing with your 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 voice, the voices in your head. That's really you. So you're not really talking to different people or different entities. These are all the voices in your head. So this is your voice. So high ram or the high ram is basically the super or superior part of you. So now let's pan down to what I uh, wrote out about Superman. The word Superman, super, is not a, is, is basically an abbreviation of the word superior. So what you're dealing with when you're talking about Superman, I broke that movie, Man is Still Down, so you can go look at that. Superman or superior man is your higher self and you have your lower self. Remember his, his superior name, his, his godly name was Cal L, which they say is, um, translates to voice of God. So once again, we, we correspond to Superman or the higher man or the higher ram with soup with uh Kale of the voice. So we talking about the throat. So those are I put those numbers next to them because those are the chakras. So we're not dealing with the lower chakras or like one, two, and three. Most most of the time four or the heart chakra is one that balances them all. So we, we haven't even talked about the seventh chakra. But both those are the chakras that they correspond. The throat chakra is the fifth one, the heart chakra is the fourth one, the pineal gland or the third eye chakra is the sixth one. Alright? So also I broke down a little bit more is J Jedediah was also Solomon's name at birth, given to him by the prophet Nathan, if you will. That means beloved of God and so on and so forth. But if you look at the first four letters, that's the Jedi again. So once again, I'd like to refer you and cross-reference you to different videos. Go to my, um, uh, what's that, uh, Skywalker, whatever that movie is, Star Wars video. Um, you'll break down, uh, you'll learn what the Jedi, and so the, they get that, uh, Lucas, George Lucas gets the name from the Dejed, D-J-E-D, it's basically symbolic of Osiris' spine. So you can also look that up and get more information on that. The Dejed and the Jedi and so on and so forth. Because then you will understand, if you go back to the video, you understand that basically uh, what um, Darth Vader represents is Darth, which is knowledge. Knowledge is sex. That's why he looks like a black penis. That's, that's all that really is. He's just head, his helmet is shaped like a penis. So that was all symbolic of uh, sex and so on and so forth. So you can go back to Star Wars and look at that, and you know Doth means uh, knowledge or Gnosticism and uh, so on and so forth. And uh, 
which is to know in the Bible means sex. If you haven't figured that out. That's why I say I'm cross-referencing videos to encourage you to go look at other videos because you're not going to get all the information in this and then you're going to be like, oh, he's just making shit up. So, how do you feel about it? Use the facts I use. Facts of the story, facts and so on and so forth. Facts of the movie, kal -El, They said mean voice of God. I didn't make that up. Um, and then you determine if the, at least the story I'm giving around it is plausible. So, I told you he was in a shallow grave. So, what we're dealing with here is the sound ohm. So, once again, I'm trying to basically encourage you to go back into um, doing meditation. So, I'll show this book again. I showed it in my last video. Dark Light Consciousness. So, it's a lot of techniques on how to breathe and visualize so on and so forth. Edward Bruce Bynum. So, so also, I've shown this book many times. The Metaphysical. Bible dictionary, so it gives a lot of names, so you can break down the names of what Solomon means, which means peaceful, and the metaphysics of it. Um, you get the higher on the king of Tyre, and so on and so forth. Um, so, like I said, if this is what I would appreciate, if you, uh, I no longer uh, respond to your messages. I know a lot of people been inboxing me. I don't even look at the comments anymore because it was kept going back to the same stuff. Some type of, it's almost like you need me to convince you. I'm not trying to convince anybody who don't, who just, you have to come to this on your own. I'm just giving you information. Um, that you can use. Some people just use it for entertainment. Some people are not gonna, no matter how many times I say it, gonna ever try to meditate or notice stuff for yourself. That's the only way you're gonna truly know anything. All this is secondhand information. So for the people who who uh, try to kick uh, Wikipedia in the nuts, it's usually gives you some good information and it's usually truthful based on what everybody agreed upon. But all everything is secondhand information in these books and even Wikipedia. So you have to internalize things. So I just a sidebar here. That's how all the meridians and things were uh, in the Chinese, uh, the 12 um, meridians and so on and so forth. Those things were discovered before the microscopes and, and so on and so forth. Someone had to go and breathe and do meditations and go inside and map out the inside of the body. So just to give you an example of some of the things that you should and will be able to do eventually once you practice these things. Um, trying to make sure I've covered everything. So once again, I get at the end and I mumble and ramble a lot. You can um, you can always um, you know, like I said, go deeper into this because I took a lot of notes. But I try to make my uh, videos short. It's almost going on 20 minutes now, so I'm going to summarize. What I think the three ruffians represent is basically how you got put into third dimension or the physical realm. So that's why it's three of them. That's why their their last the, the hint to it is the last three letters of the of the of the ending of their names. Which makes them all make their names. The only thing different about their three names is the endings, which bring you to the OM sound, sometimes spelled with an OM or AUM, and so on and so forth. And that sound geometrically will give you a symbol called the Sri Yantra. You can also look that symbol up and meditate in addition to making the sound at the same time. So you're not going to see any of these geometries just by not being experienced yet. Also, the story goes on about what they hit you with. So the allegory is pretty much telling you 24 hours in a day, and if a gauge is used to you, or rule, or to a measurement of time, then you know you're talking about time. If a square is used to beat you upright or make right angles, you know, so we're dealing with being right or being correct or being standing upright. Um, uh, and if they hit you in the chest or your heart area, um, so that's, that's basically a space because it's a framing square, square, square. So the other dimension, you know, you need three dimensions. The other three dimensions is depth, because a two-dimensional uh, square is just a flex square. When you make it three-dimensional, you're dealing with a cube. So we're in a third dimension. So we've been hexed. Hex means six. So we got six sides to a cube. So if you look at a box, it's six sizes, six sides, I should say, six and six and hex is all the same thing. That's why when you hear these stories, I told you, don't look at nothing negative. What it means to hex someone, it's pretty much you had sex. You, you put them in a six, a six-sided box. So that's all this is. Earth is a cube. So all the movies about cubes, we're talking about Earth. Anything about uh, a, a, a hexagram or a six-pointed star, you're talking about Saturn. Anything about a five-pointed star, you're talking about um, uh, Venus. That's why on soccer ball, you get a you get pentagons and hexagons, a five and a six. Just another side. I'm just I'm throwing all this extra stuff at the end because I'm wrapping it up. Like I said, you have to do your own research and get the details of these stories. And then that's when you'll learn more about Hiram Abiff. He's a master of geometry. He's uh, of the tribe of Naphtali. So basically, um, he's also a descendant of Tubal Cain. Remember, Tubal Cain is the third degree um, Mason's password. 
So you get that password. I already told you two ball cane is a play on words. Two balls and your cane, two balls and your penis. So he, he's a descendant of your penis. So, you know, you, you can go on further and further and look at more of the story and break it down. But the gist of it is, is like all these other stories, it's about incarnation, reincarnation, uh, leaving your body, things in the sky, the energies in the sky, so on and so forth. Vibration, tones. You got to work on your tones. That's why when you get into this magic stuff, whether you do it out loud or they can say you can do it in your mind, because I gave you a magic book on a reference. So look at some of my magic videos. Uh, I gave you a, a reference to a book called uh, 12 Lessons of Magic. It'll tell you you can make these vibrations with your throat. So that's what the vowels are. They want their vowels in the old languages. So you're dealing with the vowels, those high-pitched sounds. A-E-I-O-U, and so on and so forth. Um, I think that's it. So just to pan down. Yeah, that's it. Alright, so just, just understand that that's what this story is about, all other stories. If you have any comments that you don't like or you want to add something, help the other people out. I'm not getting involved anymore. Um, I've only got a couple more videos I think I want to do. That's why I stopped making them because I pretty much gave you all the information. This is, this is basic. These are basic lessons. So folks, for somebody out there jumping up in their seat right now, oh, it's more to it who's a little bit more advanced. Then share it if you like, but I'm trying to get people started. Yeah, there's a whole lot more to this stuff. But if you get started with this and get your breathing, visualization, and meditation stuff down, ability to get into a trance without using any of these extra things like alcohol or, or ayahuasca or DMT, if you can do it naturally, uh, start by learning how to keep a dream journal, learn how to uh, lucid dream, basically carry your consciousness while you sleep. Uh, It'll take you to the other levels. But this is for the basic level. This is to get people started. This is, and, and I'm giving you references. This book could take you a little bit further, Dark Light Consciousness, on how to uh, bring that, what they call Kundalini, or that electric snake up to your, your forehead. Because if you notice on the headdress of other Egyptians, they have a snake and a bird. The snake re represents electricity. The bird represents magnetism. All right? So it's always, remember, we are electromagnetic beings. El or Emmanuel was Jesus, his counterpart, which was magnets or magnetism was or Mary Magdalene. Also, I broke down the story of Dorothy. Dorothy means gift of God in the Wizard of Oz. Remember, her the, she was raised by her uncle Henry. Henry means voltage, V O L T, which is electricity. His wife was named Emily, but they didn't call her M. Emily. They call her I M. The word, the name Emily means rival. So her rival is electricity. But since they, they gave it away by saying I am, like the letter M. So they're letting you know the, the rival to voltage or electricity is magnetism. Same story. I'm cross-referencing at this end. I'm trying to encourage you. Look at all the videos. You're going to be like, ah. Oh. Looking at one video, you're going to be like, uh-uh. These are not about the body. These are real people. These are not real people. These are characters. None of these people ever existed. They're all inside your body. They're energies inside your body that you can activate. All right, that's it. Going on 23 minutes. Thank you.